yes, spectral resolution and vice versa. So that's our problem. So because of that problem, because of that problem, what will happen is that you know when you have this, you know you can see here, you can see here you now this area will correspond to one pixel. This area is having only showing. So that one pixel will be only showing. Right? There is no problem. But this area contains both vegetation as well as soil. So that one pixel will contain both vegetation and soil. So that means here we have seen the spectra. So you will get one spectra which is called a mixed spectra. Then it's not a pure spectra. It will be a mixed spectra of both soil and vegetation. So this problem is called spectral mixing problem. When you have coarse spatial resolution, uh, I, I told you when you want high spectral resolution, your spatial resolution will be coarse. So what will happen is that you will have this type of mixing which is called spectral mixing. That means the spectra from here, spectra I hope all of you understood what is spectra. So the spectra from vegetation will be mixing with the spectra from the soil. I hope all of you understood what I mean by spectra. Spectra means it's a it's how this particular material or this particular pixel and the material covering this particular pixel is reflecting across all the wavelengths. So that's the spectra. So this spectra will be different for wheat, will be different for barley, will be different for soil. But the problem is if you have more than one such thing in your in your field of view, then there will be something called spectral mixing will happen. So this is a problem that we have to address. So you know you will have only one value. From that you have to identify what is this. What is what percentage of material one is there? What percentage of material two is there? So that said, if I get one spectra here, I have to understand how much percentage of vegetation is here, how much percentage of soil is here. See, this is you know, this is called linear mixing. Okay. I tell you, you know, this what what will happen is that. You know, I have two objects within this pixel. You know? So within this pixel, I have two materials. One is soil, one is vegetation. So the energy from or the rays from the sun is coming here. It is hitting one material. It will go back to the sensor. Then no problem. So that particular uh, material will be recorded for that particular area. But if suppose we have two materials in the same pixel, but we have pixel area. So what will happen? The reflected rays from material one and material two will travel through the atmosphere, and by the time they will be sensor, both of them will be mixing together as one. Well. So this is called spectral mixing. So that means you have the, the reflected rays from material one, the reflected rays from material two. Since I have more than one material in that instantaneous field of view, both of these will be getting together or combining together and being received at this sensor. So that means I have alpha 1 into the reflectance of material 1 plus alpha 2 into the reflectance of material 2. They are combining together to give me one spectra which is being received at this sensor. So this is called linear mixing. So that means 1 plus 1. Okay. Linear and non-linear equations we all know. See x1 plus x2 is a linear equation. x1, x2 plus x2 square is a non-linear equation. Right? So that means x1, let x1 be the reflectance of this material 1, x2 be the reflectance spectra of material 2, then alpha 1, x1 plus alpha 2, x2 will give you the mixed spectra. That's called linear mixing. But what will happen if the materials are very fine? You know, if it is if I will take some minerals, I, I'll take minerals, if I take some different rocks, I'll powder them, I'll mix them together. This is called an intimate mixture. So what will happen in intimate mixtures is that, you know, the mixtures are very close, the, the, the particles are very close by. So what will happen? First, the sun ray or the light will heat on one material. 
See, if it will directly go to the sensor, there is no problem. But what will happen? This will hit on one material, will hit on another material, will hit on another material, then it will go back to the spectrum. So there problem happens, what is there? You know, so there it will be spectra of material 1 into spectra of material 2 into spectra of material 3 will be going there. So there, you know, the ticking is happening at multiple materials, so it's like a non-linear mixing. So there are two things, linear mixing which happens for macroscopic mixtures. Macroscopic mixtures means which are, you know, not very, uh, and which are actually large objects, you know, and the vegetation and soil. But if you consider minerals, it's microscopic mixing. You know, we are doing one project on mapping the minerals on lunar surface using Chandrayaan 2, Chandrayaan 1, and Chandrayaan. Now Chandrayaan 3 also we are getting. So all these data. So what is the problem there? These are the minerals there. So minerals, these are intimate mixtures. So what will happen is that, you know, this will have a non-linear mixing. So, see, this is just a problem. So we have to, you know, unmix that. So these are some of the research problems that I was planning to explain here. We don't, because of the limitation of time, you know, we don't know how much we will be able to cover, but this is one problem that we are uh, trying to resolve. That means, I told you one main problem is the resolution trade-off. You, know? you cannot have an image with high spatial and high spectral resolution together. So how you can solve that problem? So this problem, to solve this problem, you know, one solution is to lower the altitude of the, uh, of the sensors. That means you use UAVs. So, but that is nice again. And just uh, finish it. This, this is five minutes and we can go. Sorry for keeping you waiting. I don't want to repeat this again. So. See this. Uh, so, one possible approach is that, you know, this. Uh, so, yeah, so people may ask why you cannot use UAVs or why you cannot bring the camera down from the satellite, why you are keeping it very high, why you cannot bring them down. You can keep one one camera for each places and take the images. What is the problem? It's same like asking why you cannot have electric poles, why you want the unwired network, you know, satellite communication. We are using satellites for communication. You can also use satellites, you know, uh, without satellites you can just have a wired network to how your communication, phone communication, right? Earlier we were having wired networks. Why you need satellite communication? Because it will give you a better view of the things. And also it's more economical. You know, it's not feasible to always have a drone flying over this area. You know, that the feasibility is a problem. And the thing is, it will give you a wide area view of that. So these two are the aspects which demand the use of Earth observation satellites or remote sensing satellites which takes a photograph of the earth surface. So, now my problem is that I cannot have both spatial, high spatial resolution and high spectral resolution images. So, either I have to take a hyperspectral image which is having high spectral resolution and I have to enhance its spatial resolution. See, I have to take a hyperspectral image, an image having many bands, maybe 400 bands, 300 bands, and I have to improve its spatial resolution. Improving spatial resolution means what? You have to you have to break that pixels into small, small sub-pixels. You can see here, this image was having a high, high core spatial resolution. This image is having an improved spatial resolution. What is happening here? One pixel here is now broken down into many sub-pixels and you have to, you have only this value but using machine learning or using other techniques you have to find out what are the value for all these individual pixels so this is an imposed problem that we want to solve that's where you know one part of our search problem is that we need to address you know we need to take a high spectral resolution image and want to improve its spatial resolution So that is where we try to use something called you know, the, the usual approach of using this uh, 
And there are some data sets which you can go through the slides. These are some of the available data sets. I, this, uh, these are openly available. So, this is our idea. You know? If I get a coarse spatial resolution image, can I increase its spatial resolution? So, okay, so let's, uh, before waiting for T, just one thing is uh, sparse coding. What is sparse coding? You know? Suppose I have, I told you already, suppose I have some base vectors, some base vectors, then I can express my actual vectors in terms of those base vectors. Suppose my base vectors are b1, b2, b3, and I have my actual vectors, say, i1, i2, i3, up to i100. So that said, I can express i1 as alpha1, b1 plus alpha2, b2 plus alpha3, b3, i2 as beta1, i1, beta1, b1 plus beta2, b2 plus beta3, b3. All this I can do in terms of these base vectors. So that base vectors are called dictionaries, and the coefficients alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 are called coefficients. So I have dictionaries, I have coefficients, so I can get that actual data. What is my actual data? My actual data is say V1. This is my actual data. So V1 I can get by alpha 1, B1 plus alpha 2, B2 plus alpha 3, B3. So this you can Correlate with what we have learned in our frequency Fourier transform and all these things. What we have learned in Fourier transform, see there we were using the Fourier basis as the base vectors. That means the Fourier basis were the base vectors you can see here, you know, these were the base vectors, right? The same way. Here, what are our base vectors? You know, you have certain base vectors and you have the coefficients that you can combine together to form your data. So that means, if I want to get a signal, this F1, F2, F3 are the base vectors and that their amplitude or their strength, you know, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 are the coefficients. So, Fourier transform can also be considered as a way of sparse coding or dictionaries and sparse forms. Same way we will like, we'll also see how machine learning can serve as a base for uh, learnable basis. See, these bases are computed. For example, Fourier bases, I am computing the bases using Fourier transform. Wavelet, I am using Wavelet transform to compute the bases. Same way, you can use any such transform. But certain transforms are fit for certain type of data. Certain transforms are not fit for certain other type of data. So can you learn those bases? So that is where machine learning will come into picture. And so uh, there we will take a break. So only thing is, you know, you, I'll just uh, show you that figure and we will wait for the T. See, this is how, you know, these are the sparse coefficients and you have, you know, your dictionary. So this will become more clear here. You know. This one, this this will be one data. So that means this is one image which I am trying to flatten that image. Flatten image means image is now in as a matrix. So can I we I mean resize it like a one-dimensional array? You know, if I have a matrix, matrix means what? It's having rows and columns. So what I will do? I take the first row, keep it like this, and take the second row append that second row to the first row, then append it again. So that means now I have flattened this entire image as a one-dimensional array of a matrix. This is called, you know, I am row major, you know, appending or row major way of resizing that array into a 1D, resizing that matrix into a 1D array. So that means I took one row I place that row, I append it to the next row. So this way, I created one image in a 1D form. So I have these images, these are the dictionaries, these are the sparse forms, which will combine together too. So that means, if you see like this, you know, this will become more clear. So you can see that there are different 
images. See, this is 3, this is 8, this is 9. But these are the bases. So these bases can in some way combine together to form 3, some way combine together to form 8, some way combine together to form 9. So coming back to our mathematical correlation, you can easily correlate now this where that uh, small small portions of the image that we have seen B and alpha is how they are combining together Y may be 8, may be 3, may be 1, may be 2 all these actual data is Y and all these components can combine together uh, to form these you know. so these are the bases these are the actual your data so we break here for the Thank you. 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 Thank you.